A big topic of debate amongst fans of the Biological Chronicle is whether love is canon or not. After all, they are biomechanical beings with beating hearts, lungs, and brains underneath it all. So why does this come into question? Let's get into it, here on Biotalk. If you haven't yet, click the subscribe button for more videos like this one, and go ahead and follow me on Instagram, at the Zach Cap. Greg Farsi has said on multiple occasions that love isn't canon. Now, as the High Lord and Emperor, gatekeeper of the Bionicle story and what is and is not canon, a lot of fans will automatically take his side. However, I'd like us to look no further than Star Wars. In my opinion, this doesn't seem too dissimilar to George Lucas with his whole Greedo shot first statement. Both creators of their respective stories contradict themselves non-stop. There are clear signs pointing towards Han shooting first, and in a way, Lucas is just trolling his audience. He knows something, and much like Greg Farsty, for some reason wants to stir up the debate further. Which, in a way, keeps the fanbase alive. Perhaps Farsty means sexually. That is seemingly true. The living beings in Bionicle don't reproduce, they're built. Yet they still clearly have emotions and strong feelings for each other. Now here is where I want to emphasize my point that love is not just physically romantic, but emotional. That one thing is clear in Bionicle. This isn't about kissing or smooching or, you know. I'm strictly talking about affection here. AKA holding hands, a desire to spend one's time with a significant other. Let's look at an interview with Greg Farsty from 2003 to 2004 in the Lego Magazine section, Ask Greg. He was asked, are there any romantic relationships in the Mask of Light movie? He said, not really. And not really? We'll get back to that seemingly vague answer in a moment when we go over the Mask of Light. He was also asked, do Matorn have girlfriends and stuff? Like romance? He said, to be honest, I've never really seen the point in romantic relationships in Bionicle, since they cannot lead anywhere. It's something fans have fun with on the web, but it is not something I concern myself with. And he was also asked, do you think romance between two characters might ever play a lead role in Bionicle? Here, he's pretty straight up about it. He said, I doubt it. Not on my watch anyways. I've never seen any point in introducing romances in a toy line aimed at boys 8-12, to 12, and into a culture where the potential for marriage and children does not exist. So there you go. It's pretty clear to me that he's essentially explaining that the type of romance that leads to marriage or children does not really exist in Bionicle. Which I can agree with here. Love is not a totally blanket statement. Asexual people are still very capable of having romantic relationships. Now remember, we are talking about a toy line. I have no doubt that there are plenty of kids that grew up with Bionicle, that played with their figures creating different scenarios, and 100% I'm sure they would make up love triangles and all sorts of stories with love included that we naturally created in our minds because, well, we are only human and it only makes sense. The fact that there are some fans out there who seem to be adamant about love isn't canon. Why? What's this agenda against love being canon? Like, who hurt you? Now, let's look at examples from the films. In Bionicle Mask of Light, the movie, it seems pretty obvious to me that Holly and Jawler are flirting during their Coley match. Unless he wishes it. I'll keep that in mind. In a deleted scene, you can see Jawler twirling his fingers, literally reacting to his feelings. He doesn't really know what to say to Holly. Her tone of voice here, too. I have no time for a long goodbye. I was just gonna say, uh, well, you owe me a rematch on the Coley Field. Well then, <laughs> you'd better hurry back, because I'll be practicing. I mean, come on, look at Vakama's reaction. But also, to drive my previous point home, let's look at her tribute at the end. Is this not an action made out of love? Friends! Silence! This island is a great and wondrous place. Never have any been as blessed as we are to live in such a paradise. Mm, true. I love my home, and Jala loved it too. But above all, Jala respected his duty. Let us repay him by doing our duty. Let us remember him by fulfilling our destiny. Let us go forward together. Now, let's look at Legends of Metronui. 
It's very brief, but when the Toa Metro are riding towards the city, Matao makes a slight comment to Nokama that seems purely romantic. Hey, Nakama. I see us taking a romantic ride drive. <laughs> and you believe Bakama has odd visions? Huh? Like, why single her out, the only female member of the group? I feel like it's subtle, but it has obvious implications, am I right? And now, let's look at Web of Shadows. The feelings are in no way mutual, but how can you not agree that Sidorak is straight simping for Rudaka? He's following her, to please her, compliment her every move. I mean, everyone knows Rudaka and Sidorak. It's clear as day. Is it to be so simple, Sidorak? Rudaka, my queen. No, not your queen. Not yet. Oh, of course, formality. Fine offer, Rudaka. Consider it an engagement gift. Huh, well then. She doesn't feel anything towards him. If anything, she thinks he's quite pathetic. But you can definitely see he at least admires her in some way the and king. wants to show his affection by impressing her. If doing so would make you feel better. But I can't defeat him myself. I know. Now, these are just movies, and while the LEGO group was definitely consulting on some of the production with the creative team, the legitimate creatives behind them surely took some liberties. Now, in my opinion, and many other fans' opinions, the number one example of Love and Bionicle is clear as day to me. It's between Huki and Maku in the Matanui online game, and the 2002 to 2003 Flash animations. It's clear as day that Maku is crushing on Huki hard. She's consistently asking if Huki's okay, and that she should be there for him. She has a crush on him. She even has this poster in her hut that is signed by Huki and says, To Maku, with lots of love, Huki. And then, of course, in the 2003 Flash animations, they almost kiss. They're on the brink of war with the Borok, and when interrupted by Jawler and the gang, they blush. Again, they are just animations, but like, come on. This stuff stuck with me as a kid. So you're kidding me, right? Not canon? I don't think so. Now, I've read online, and this is from a BZ Power forum. Someone said, didn't Greg technically canonize love a while back in one of those Ask Greg posts? I think he said it was less that they couldn't and didn't feel love. It's that they would have had no frame of reference for the emotion, and no real drive to follow. But once they actually began living on Barra Magna, they actually had something to compare their emotions to, and began to understand what it all meant. So, technically, love is canon in Bionicle, but only with the inhabitants of Spherus Magna. Agori, Glatorians, Skrall, and so on, who reproduce biologically. The inhabitants of the Matoran universe can only feel a strong fraction of that emotion. Still aren't convinced? How about the love Takua has for Puku? The Toa have for each other. And again, Holly's tribute to Jaller in the Mask of Light. Can you not say that Matora's sacrifice was out of his love for his friends in Matanui? I have no doubt that this is a debate that's going to go on to the end of time, as is with many other facets of many other fan bases. Everyone is entitled to their own opinion, but personally, I'd say the writing is on the wall. Even if Greg Farshi says what he says, I personally don't see how anyone, given the trials and tribulations of the characters inhabiting the Bionicle story, could not see these characters having love for each other. Anyways, thanks for watching guys, this was a fun one. I'll be posting another poll soon, deciding what Bionicle topic video I should make next. Please subscribe and check me out on Instagram, at the Zatcap. I'll see you guys later on the next episode of Biotalk.